now in its ninth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey everybody, it's the Ramble, and I'm Alex Bennett, and we'll be here until midnight tonight. Alex Bennett! Ladies, you know, we, we could get this thing going right if I just push the right button, you know? Okay, let's do it. Ladies and gentlemen... And let me be very dignified in announcing that the person who is currently with us is the king of comedy, the <laughs> joker of jest, uh, the uh, it's Larry Bubbles Brown. I don't know why. Yes, uh, half a slay. That's a good uh, thing we can talk about. About what people, what do you, you use coffee to get up in the morning? I use co- I get coffee right here now, and this is not even the morning any longer. You know. Yeah, I've never had coffee in my life. Really? I tasted it once and it was so horrible I couldn't take it. But I, I, I like the smell of it, but the taste was just horrible. I'll tell so. you, I, I, I didn't like coffee until I, uh, when I was in San Francisco and was at KMEL, they had a coffee machine. And that's when I first got used to coffee because I, I realized you don't have to drink it black. You know, it's a vile brew, black. But you yeah. add your sugars or your sweeteners, and you add some uh, milk to it, and it's it's really very tasty, you know. But I could never really? drink this without that stuff in it, no. Uh-uh. And it seems like uh, the way you see people line up at Starbucks, it's almost like a methadone clinic or something. <laughs> well, that, that's true, Starbucks, you know. I mean, you know, Marjorie. Hammering on the door at five. <laughs> M- yeah. <laughs> right. Your own line about, are you open? I have cash. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it seems to be kind of, it does seem to be kind of an addiction. So I don't know, but it's, I guess it's kind of healthy for you. So who knows? Well, it is an addiction. Uh, uh, you know, but I mean, I, uh, I don't know if it's an addiction with me. I don't drink it every morning when I'm not on. When I'm not doing something, I don't have a cup of coffee. But I, in fact, I have one cup of coffee I make, and I drink about maybe a third of it, and then I put it in the refrigerator and use it the next day, warm wow. it up. Yeah, yeah. So I sometimes I've gone with the same cup of coffee for like three days in a row. So I know people out there yeah. are thinking I'm weird, but I'm not weird. I'm strange, but I'm not weird. Yeah, but I guess I get my caffeine from uh, Diet Coke. That's where you get it. Yes, absolutely. I mean, I was addicted for years to Diet Coke, but I don't do that anymore. I use a seltzer, but flavored seltzers like, uh, uh, what's the one I use here? What's the one I have here? Let me hold on a second. Ice, it's called. Sparkling ice. And uh, I just found a new flavor. I love coconut pineapple. So, yeah. So that, yeah, those are good. I think I've tried those. Yeah, I I buy them by the by the casefuls. Yeah, and uh, the coffee I do when I'm doing a show, like when I'm doing this interview here, I just had to make a cup of coffee uh, so that I'm you know perky. <laughs> yeah, you're known for being perky. Yeah, but uh, well, I had to get up early today. You see, I, I don't like to get out early simply because uh, my legs are weak when I first wake up, you know. I, my body isn't completely awake. Uh, and not that it ever is these days, but, for the you know, I like it awake for a certain amount. So Marjorie and I have been trying to get her onto my bank account because she's never been part of my bank account in case I... I drop dead tomorrow. She has access to it, right? So, I mean, we go down there the other day, and we had to wait an hour for somebody. And finally, it turns out this Bank of America uh, branch, which is the Harlem branch, Bank of America, they only had three people working the whole place and people waiting 
in line to see somebody. Nice. Right? So he said, well, you should get down here earlier in the morning. So this morning we decided we'd go down, and we got there about 11, right? Just packed. And still just three people. And I asked him, I said to him, this is Bank of America, folks. I want you to know that because I do want to give them a bad time about it. This is the Harlem branch. And he told me, he said, we used to have a couple, we had another person here. He said, but then they moved him to another branch and they didn't replace him. And I said, could that be because this is the Harlem branch of Bank of America and it's a certain amount of racism? He says, well, I'm not saying it, but you got it. Really? Wow. Yeah. So, you know, I mean, that that that, that was the deal with them. And uh, I, uh, uh, you know, I, I'm really mad about it because... Uh, you know, it takes me a little bit more to go down the street to the bank than it used to. I now use a cane. Uh, not that I can't walk, but I'm afraid of falling. And so the cane gives me a sense of security. I don't know. I've never fallen with the cane, so I don't know if it would really help me if I finally decide to fall. But that's why I have it, right? Well, the first thing I've learned is, to, I'm telling you this now, listen to me, Larry, it's it's a, something you should know. Take it to the bank. You will thank me for the advice. Go to like Amazon or someplace like that and buy a cane. Now, you don't need a cane right now, do you? Uh, not yet, no. But here's why you need it. When I'm with the cane and I go into a bank and it's just a lot of people in there, everybody's sitting down, they've got a chair to sit in and everything, and there's a line... People always say to you, oh, well, go ahead of me, please. Somehow, Ah. the cane is a hall pass. Very nice, yeah. And and I don't need it. I mean, I could walk from here to the bank without the cane, but I would feel insecure without it, okay? That's the only reason I'm using it. But because I'm using it, people go, oh, here, have my seat, you know, and I have to tell them, no, I'll stand, you know. But everybody because you've got a cane that's an immediate hall pass isn't that wonderful see yeah well, that'll work so, so. Go, go out and buy yourself a cane just just tr- buy a cane try it for one day and see how people react to it they they react to you differently you know where before they go get out of my way I was in here first <laughs> when you got the cane oh you've got a cane oh, oh go ahead of me please yeah. Yeah. So I'm happy to use well, the cane, even when I don't need it. You ought to threaten B of A with a lawsuit over that. That would get them moving, I would think. I'm thinking. Well, I'm calling them and telling them that you know that it's it's disgusting what your your practices, in that this is a bank that if you've got there were about eight people waiting, okay. If there are eight people waiting, then you haven't really supplied this bank with the manpower it needs to take care of the traffic it deals with. Uh, And uh, so they should do something about it, but they don't do anything about it. Same four, three people, one one, teller, okay. The other guy I don't think is a banker. He refers to the other person as a banker. And then he's like, I don't know, he just... He's a gatekeeper. But we went down the other day, you see, to get her, you know, uh, put onto my account, and we almost completed it. But then he said, we can't get access to your Social Security because you asked that it be blocked. So she had to go home and had to call, I can't remember who it was, Experian or somebody like that, and get them to unblock it. So we got it unblocked. Oh, you've got, you got a freeze. Yeah. Uh, you can put a freeze on your social security information, okay? So she yeah. uh, she had to sign up for Experian and take the block off. It, it defaults to a block if you sign up. It defaults to a block, so you have to unblock it. So she unblocked it, and we're good to go. So now we're going to go back to the bank to finish the transaction, something that should only take five minutes. Five okay? minutes. Right. Uh, yeah, and we get down there, and there are all these people, and I said, well, "We're back. We just want to finish that thing." And she says, um, "He says, 
well, I'm sorry, you got a whole line in front of you. And I'm going, but we're just finishing something you asked us to come back and finish. He said, well, you should have got, you should get here earlier in the day. And I'm going, what time do I have to get here? You told me to get here, you know, around 10, 1030, something like that. He said, it's about a quarter of 11 now. And look, he says, well, I can't do anything about it. You're going to have to wait like everybody else. Wow. And I'm going, you know, in most, in most places they would say, oh, yeah, you were here the other day. Come on in. Let's just finish this thing off. Okay, goodbye. Next. You know, but that's not the case. So I mean, I'm I'm thinking I'm thinking of changing banks to tell you the truth. I would. Nothing works smoothly. That's you know, and I've got this anything. I got this this ton of money coming in, and I'm thinking of not putting it in this bank. I'm thinking of putting it in another bank where I can actually see an officer of the bank. But I went across the street to Wells Fargo. Right across the street is a Wells Fargo. Okay. And I wanted to see how many people were waiting there. Nobody was waiting, but I couldn't see that there were any bankers there either. <laughs> so, yeah. you know, I mean, and I, I got to say, it is racist that they think, hey, oh, this is the Harlem branch. You know, it's known yeah, as screw that. that. Right. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah. You know, we don't we don't need Negro money. Yeah, so uh, it's it's uh, so that's my argument with Bank of America. Where do you, who do you bank? bank? Who do you bank? The with? banks in general. I've got Wells Fargo, which has a terrible reputation, and uh, well, Bank of America isn't much better. No. Have you noticed? And I don't know that you deal with the rest of the world like I do, because you're kind of a hermit there. But do mm -hmm. you notice that services that you need are just really poor these days? Horrible. You know everything. Everything, and I, I Techn technology is not making things work quicker or better. No, no, absolutely not. But I mean, I just find that it, it it's kind of horrible all the way around. I mean, yeah. every, everything we try to do, it's like you know, like this going to this bank. It, it shouldn't be a problem. I should go down there. Hey, I want to see a banker. Okay, fine. I want to put her on my account. Fine, you know, and they could be. 10 other people waiting but they've got enough human beings to handle the traffic but if the traffic is that bad every morning at that bank then Bank of America should say well we need to put a few more bankers in that bank okay but they don't care they just don't, they don't care. care but uh, yeah people should be I, you should leave that bank yeah but I mean this goes through to everything you know the other day uh, I've been having a problem with uh, Hulu which is a you know, uh, online. You know, one of those. Uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, one of those services. One of those apps. Okay, but I get. I get. I cut the cord about a year ago, a year and a half ago, and that's where I get all my TV and stuff like that. All my local stations and whatever. I pay ninety nine bucks a month for the service, but I get all the. You know, I get all the stuff I would have gotten with cable. All right, so. Um, which is preferable, by the way, because with cable, you get 400 channels. How many of them? Like, you can get 400 channels on your cable, right? Do you have cable? I didn't know that, man. They really do. Yeah, you, there are 400 there. Um, but how many channels do you watch? Most people probably watch five or seven. Well, maybe not even that. I think we'd only watch two or three. You know, so to you cut the cord and just do it over your over your internet is the best way. Of course, you don't have high speed, so that's not possible. But no. Uh, but anyway, uh, um, I uh, the problem was with Hulu for the last couple of, about the last week. Uh, I couldn't get it to hook up every time. We would say looking for bandwidth and whatever and so on and so forth and they can't do it blah, blah, blah. so finally I call Hulu to tell them what there's a problem and you know it wasn't that I was calling for them to solve my problem I was calling to inform them that something was wrong with their service on Roku so that they could do something about it so they could talk to if it was Roku's fault then it was Roku's fault but they could talk to Roku 
I could not get this woman to understand. She said, well, well let's start your system again and let's start. And I'm going, I know, I've done all that, okay? <laughs> I, I know technology probably uh -huh. better than you do, okay? I've done all the things I need to do and nothing has corrected it. And I said, I'm just phoning to let you know. And she says, well, let's try uninstalling it and then re I said, Don't, aren't you listening to me? I've done all that. And I, it was the most excruciating experience I've gone through in weeks, you know? And, yeah. and, and it shouldn't be. It, the person on the other end should understand that what I'm saying, I don't need your help. I need a, you to go out and talk to Roku and get this problem solved with them because there's something between your program and whatever. Well, this morning, everything seems to be 100% okay. Apparently, overnight, they fed a new program from Roku to update the uh, whatever, and, and we're fine. But it was maddening with these people at Hulu, this woman whom, I don't know, she spoke English, but I don't know where she was. Um, but she doesn't know anything about the technology. All she looked at, she has a little book there. She has a thing on her on her on her computer screen, and that's all she's answering. So you're not even getting people who can solve your problem anymore. You know? No, I, uh... I mean there was a time I remember when they had uh, uh, tech service at most of these companies, and you would call somebody like I don't know uh, Apple or whoever, and you would get somebody immediately who was like a geek who knew how to help you solve your problem. And, and I don't know if you remember those days because you may not have had that much technology in your life, but that's the way it should be. And it isn't anymore. It's simply some guy in India who's looking at a, 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 a manual on his desktop uh, that he's reading from a screen and if, if he has to go through certain procedures that he doesn't even know why he's going through those procedures. I mean, it's just, it's insane that you don't get service anymore. And I think we should, right? That's what no, I, we're a service economy, but no service. I mean, what do you do? You're paying for these services. Part yeah. of that service should be help when it goes bad. And part of the service I should get from a bank that I've been dealing with for the last at least 20, 25 years is that when I go down there, hey, if it's something simple they got to handle, then just put me the head of the line, get it done, and let me go. But no, mm -mm. I'm the same as anybody yeah. else sitting there. And they all happen to be black people that were waiting. So you can tell that this bank is not perceived. Yeah, I think they've got a really good uh, shot at a uh, suit there. I would say because I think it's absolutely racist. Uh, oh, so absolutely. You know that they. Well, it's classist. Let me put it that way. Oh well, the uh, Harlem. Eh, they don't need more people. Those, those, uh, those coloreds up there. They'll. Uh, they're they're used to waiting. You know, and I mean, they were waiting, and they were didn't seem agitated by waiting. But God, don't I have white privilege anymore? Jeez. <laughs> anyway, uh, uh, no. But I mean, it just I just felt sorry for them too that they had to wait. Sure. You know. So anyway, so and and so you don't like Wells Fargo either, right? There is no. They got a bad reputation, and then uh, I think all the banks are. Some of the banks now. I, I saw this. Uh, if you if you'd like take two thousand dollars out of your bank, they start. What are you? What are you? Why are you taking it out? What are you going to buy? Really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Apparently, standard practice in Canada. If you take uh, three thousand dollars out, they you. Why are you taking this money out? What are you buying? Really? Yeah, and it's. I think it's happening here too. Well, but what is the reasoning behind that? That you might maybe you were dealing drugs or something? Yeah, I guess. So uh, it's none of their effing business, whatever it is. Hey, if but, I've got if I've got five hundred thousand dollars in an account and I want four hundred and fifty thousand of that, it's none of your goddamn business why I'm taking it out. Exactly. Maybe I want to move it to another bank. <laughs> that, that has people working at it. 
I never heard anything like that before. Oh, yeah. I'll see if I can uh, find it out. I saw it on the news. Because I'm planning on buying some pretty big ticket items, and I don't want to have to tell them. I mean, if they ask me, I'm going to tell them none of your goddamn business why I'm taking my yeah, money Yeah, that would be out. great. See what happens. But if you take a big amount of cash out, you're going to probably get some questions. Wow. Wow. I uh, Okay. I give up. You know, that's that's absurd. Uh, I don't understand it at all. It's uh, nice know. living in a third world fascist hell. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what's happening. I mean, it's just yeah. it's just terrible, just terrible. And I mean, I mean, I don't go out and do a lot of stuff lately. And I'm sure I would have a ton more stories about lack of service. You know. Uh, Mine is basically, I always have a, a, a fear that, like, something goes down and I have to call GoDaddy, who is my provider for uh, uh, tech services, you know, for the Internet and so on, and my website and so on. And my fear is that something goes down and now I've got to call GoDaddy. So, I mean, immediately you get somebody. That's wonderful. And they say, what's your problem? And you give them, tell them what your problem is. And they say... Well, I can't really handle that. I'll have to turn you over to uh, a higher level of tech or something like that. Every time. Every so time. So why do you take that first call? Just wait until those <laughs> other guys are available. You know? But no, I mean, it's you get, well, you got to talk to me first. What? You're the gatekeeper? You know? Uh, if I can so you get to explain your problem to three different people. Well, I hate referring to... GoDaddy is my provider because it sounds like I'm referring to a god, you know. <laughs> my provider, you know. But my provider has a gatekeeper. I guess that's, uh, who's at the gate, pearly gates? Uh, who, who's the gatekeeper at the pearly gates? I can't remember now. Was it St. Peter? Saint Peter? Yeah, I think it's supposed to be St. Peter. But that's Christian. I, we don't go along with that. So there's no gatekeeper at our at our. Yeah. <laughs> I just remember when I was a kid, heaven always sounded very depressing to me. <laughs> well, I mean, my question is, I mean, if you're if you're a party person, do you really want to wind up in heaven? Or would you rather have flames licking your ass and having a good time in hell? Yeah. <laughs> you know. Oh boy! Wasn't that a twilight zone? That have it, hell turned out to be like a place where it was just really boring. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, it, yeah. I, I thought I was. I think it was something. Like I thought I was going to hell, and they said you are in hell. Uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> and everything was just really boring and dull. It was like a twilight zone or something like that. Yeah. You know. sure. um, probably but, sitting in a Bank of America. Probably. Yeah, well, you know, I mean, I've never. Do you do you believe in God? Uh, no, no. Yeah, I I don't believe in God either, in the traditional sense. You know, I ha I don't I don't have this concept of some guy sitting up there on a cloud with puppet strings on me. You know, so I I yeah, and I really get bothered by people who are like they're playing baseball. And they hit a home run, and they go, they slide into home, and they say, "Praise God!" Yeah, but God had nothing to do with it. God's not watching a goddamn baseball game. He's more concerned with what's going on in Gaza. You know, he's got enough trouble ev elsewhere rather than to make you have a home run. Oh, yeah, it's very annoying. Thank the Lord for that. Oh well, good for you. You know. I just never understood that. But, I mean, uh, we, we can talk about the God concept uh, next time. That would be okay. That would be very good because I want to get your concept of what God is. But uh, we got about a minute and a half left. Are you playing anywhere that people should know about? <laughs> not, that enough be, people, uh, not that enough people listen to this that it, it'll get you a big yeah, crowd. Um, but, uh, you know. May 9th, I'll be at the Netflix is not a joke festival in LA for one night yeah and how much time are they giving you at uh, 10 minutes and I'll probably ask them can I do five <laughs> <laughs> well
Well, wait a minute. I'll have to ask you that, too. What do you do in 10 minutes? Oh, that's I can, I can, a lot of stuff. That will probably be 50 jokes, I would guess. Yeah, because you're one joke guy. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so it works for you, but geez. Yeah. And if you're told to do 20 minutes, you do 100 jokes. And if you're told to do uh, right. 30 minutes, you, you do 150 jokes. Do you have that many? David, do you have that yeah, many? Yeah, David jokes? Letterman would do. They said David Letterman. They asked him, "Hey, you do? You're up? You're doing 20 minutes?" He always said, "I'd rather do 10." <laughs> he didn't like it, and I understand it. Well, well, anyway, Bob's always a pleasure talking to the uh, king yeah. of comedy. King, <laughs> well, Rupert I, I was once called the king of comedy in San Francisco. King of San Francisco you were. comedy, right? And I'm no, I no longer am, so I have to pass that mantle to somebody else, and it's you. Okay? Uh, <laughs> I'm about the only one left here now. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen. I win by default. Yeah, that's, that's Larry Bubbles Brown. Say goodbye, Larry. Bye-bye. Now in its ninth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. And here we are, folks. How are you? <laughs> yes, here we are. Isn't it amazing that we're here tonight? Uh, boy, what the last? I'm I'm exhausted. To tell you the truth, because I, you know, last night it, it never happens. That it's not like at three o'clock in the afternoon, the computers go bad. Okay, it's like last night it was ten o'clock. And I go on at 10.30, and nothing was working. I mean, I couldn't get anything to work. I couldn't get, I was trying to, uh, nothing would speak to anything else, okay? I mean, I couldn't even do this, right? I couldn't send a signal over to anywhere. I mean, it was just, it went down on me. It just completely went, it's the only thing that goes down on me that I don't like. But it went down on me, and big time. And I couldn't figure out what to do. Uh, so I called uh, Verizon. And of course, you know, I gotta tell you something. I probably should talk about this when the people are here. But I gotta tell you, uh, it was excruciating dealing with Verizon. Well, wait a minute, let me get everybody on here and then I can, I can explain it to people, okay? Here we go. There they go. We're starting to see people. There's Jeff, and uh, there's uh, Kevin's chair, and there's Brian, and there's uh, Charlie, and there is Josh. Hello, everybody. How are you? Good. Well, okay. So one of you feels good. Okay, fine. Oh, you're good, too, huh? Okay. I, I didn't see that. Here, let me... Let somebody else get on in here as well. So anyway, I was going to say, what happened? Have you ever had a technical problem and you wanted to solve it? So you figure, you know what I'll do? I'll I'll I'll, I'll just deal with their chat, <laughs> right? And that's like dealing with nobody, okay? <laughs> because until you say, let me talk to a human being. There are all these canned responses that they're giving you. And you're going, what, is, what the fuck is this all about, you know? And nothing, nothing gets taken care of. Nothing gets solved, you know? I mean, I, um, I called up and I, I said, I've got this problem. My, my computer isn't working and, and whatever. And, uh, it, 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 you know, one thing after another. And they just keep asking you all kinds of questions. Have you rebooted your machine? Yes, I, that's the first thing I do. When nothing's working, I reboot my machine. Yes, I rebooted it. Could you reboot it again? I said, well, I'm talking to you on the computer. If I reboot the computer, I'm going to lose you. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it went on like this, and I couldn't get any satisfaction. So I, I went on one recording, and it, it was one of those sound-activated recordings mm -hmm. that you could talk to. So, you know, it starts asking me a question, and I clear my throat, and then it says, oh, sorry, I couldn't hear you. 
And I'm like, what the heck? And then Adrian comes walking up, and then they skipped over to something else, and I said goodbye, and I hung up on me. Oh, I got hung up on from the chat three times. Okay. That's frustrating, yeah. So, and, and plus, you're trying to explain a very complicated problem. See, I had a problem that had no rhyme or reason. Usually I can figure out if this doesn't work, but that doesn't work, then this will work, but this doesn't work. That wasn't the case with this last night. This had no rhyme or reason why certain things worked. Why could I go on to a website on my browser, but I couldn't do anything else with this computer? I mean, it was just, it was insane. Anyway, after trying to talk to chat for an hour, I hung up on him. And I found a phone number for Verizon, which you have to go searching for a phone number. They don't give it to you on their... Uh, on their site or anything like that. Mm -hmm. So I call and I finally, I after yeah. several prompts saying all kinds of things, I finally said, let me talk to a human being. Let me talk to a human being. Uh, customer and, associate. And, customer uh, associate. You just keep saying that. Customer associate? Yeah, that works. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So anyway, so finally. No they matter got, what they, they asked. They got me to somebody. And the guy said, have you turned your computer on and off? <laughs> yes, I have. And. We go through a whole bunch of stuff, and he says, well, we can't solve that problem here. It just doesn't seem like we can solve it. I will pass this on to our tech support people, our tech people, and uh, they will call you tomorrow. Okay? So I go, all right, bye. See you later. This morning, I call, and I, it took me three times of getting hung up on before I could actually find out you know, talk to somebody. And this guy was terrific. He, he went through everything. He, he got a, a video, my video camera going in my phone so that I could show him stuff and so on and so mm. forth. And we tried one thing and another and another and another, and then we plugged in and unplugged something, and all of a sudden, boom, everything's working. You know, it's just like magic. But already he had ordered me up a new router <laughs> and a Wi-Fi extender that I'm supposed to get that I, I said I never got, but I did, and I think I threw it out. Anyway, uh, I, uh, so uh, finally I decided I didn't need the, the router, so I just went down and got the extender today. And everything seems to be working just fine now. You know, all the things that are supposed to come up, come up, and all the things supposed to work are working. I mean, none of my, my uh, uh, you know, my, uh, what do you call it? Uh, I can't call it by the name I call it. it. My Alexas in the house. None of them would work, okay, because they weren't getting an Internet signal. Mm -hmm. And sometimes if I did it by uh, trying to go through the Ethernet, the cable, it wouldn't get anything. And on the other hand, if I suddenly told some place, "Hey, why don't you try and go find the, you know, the the um, uh, the Wi-Fi," it would work with the Wi-Fi. Nothing made sense, okay? But all of a sudden, this guy said, "Unplug plug this and unplug that," and I unplugged something and replugged it in, and apparently that was something that went wrong. I don't know. <laughs> But my problem here is now, this thing happened to me yesterday, and there was no way I was, uh, this morning, I, I got up early to begin with, didn't get any sleep because I'm thinking about this as I'm lying in bed. You know that feeling, right, Brian? Mm -hmm. You know? Yep, where, where cannot go to sleep, gotta fix it. And um, uh, I, I get up, mm -hmm. and uh, it's, um, it's terrific, you know? Uh, it's not working, none of it's working. So this guy got it working, but he, that was after he ordered me the new router. So I went down to them and said, I don't need it. You know, I didn't want to get a new router and think that, oh, that one might not work or get be broken or something like that. So, you know, uh, so that was my day, you know, one thing after a goddamn another. So, so how are you guys doing? Good. 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 Okay. Boy, you're, all, you're, all over. You're, you're an exciting bunch. Let me take this off. It's getting it's mm -hmm. too hot in here for some reason. Ah. Mm. 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 <laughs> ah. Ooh. Ah. Yeah, that feels good. Now it's cool. So anyway, 
Um, so um, uh, we didn't have a show last night. There was no way we could have one. It was just impossible. You know, and I wish I had an answer. Hey, here, here's how we can solve this problem. Uh, but no, I couldn't get it on. If, I, if I'd gone on last night, I never would have gotten on. It was just, I wouldn't be able to send the signal out. Uh, the, uh, the encoder wasn't working, nothing like that, you know, so. What the hell? So, you know, that's, uh, that's, that's my story and I'm sticking to it. Um, so wh what's new? Anybody got something new they want to talk about? Well, I did my homework. You did your homework? Yeah, you gave me an assignment Wednesday. <laughs> I did? Yeah, I told you that Taylor Swift's new CD was, oh, I was getting oh, oh. out, supposed to <laughs> listen to it and report on it. You got the new CD, yeah, which is aptly entitled what? Uh, the Tortured Poets Department. Oh, jeez. What is that supposed to mean? <laughs> I guess she's a tortured poet. She is? Oh, okay. That's what the song sounds like. Okay, but now I, now you have listened to her other albums, right? Yes. You're a big Swifty. Yeah, yeah. What did you think? I think it's a great album. I love it. Really? Yeah. I don't care what whoever it was you were talking about Wednesday night says. I think no, some... some, some uh, website yeah had a writer who wrote a bad review of the album yeah and they can started to get death threats i don't think you get death threats because you just don't like the album no they right? got he got death threats literally so they took his well, name off the, nowadays. they took his name off the article no. <laughs> so he wouldn't get any more death threats I mean, this is worse than testifying against Donald Trump for crying out loud. <laughs> yep. You know, so. Yeah. Anyway, um, uh, so it, you, it's okay. I mean, do you have a favorite song on there? I don't have a favorite song yet. There's like twenty songs on it. I mean, it's a, I mean, it, you, is she is, work on it. is her music hummable? I mean, is it something that's catchy that you would walk down the street whistling? Oh. Well, some of it. I'm not sure. This I have only listened to twice, so I don't know, you know, if anything's really grabbing me yet. But I like a bunch of the songs. So that the one, the T-shirt just got me. <laughs> I was doing my homework. I wanted to report on it. So, did yeah. you? Where'd you get that? From <laughs> Brian. <laughs> Brian, Jesus. you sent that to him. It was his birthday. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I sent it for my birthday. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, that's wonderful. I did it anonymously, but I guess I gave it away. So. You gave it away on the show. Yeah. Wow. It just showed up. I wasn't expecting it or anything. I go to the door, knock on the door, open the door, and there's a package there. <laughs> I'm not expecting anything. <laughs> wow. Wow. What a world. So anyway, so, so you like the album. Okay. I like the album, yeah. Of course, I like all her albums. How many here listen to the album already? Just me, I guess. <laughs> Pretty much. Man. We have lives. I got the first one. What? I got the first one. The first yeah. one? Her first album, yeah. Why do you have her first album? Me and my daughter used to listen to it way back when. Was that it's your desire to album. bond with her? It's an old country album. Actually, <laughs> it's actually a good album. It's yeah, it is. Oh, the nothing original, like what oh, she is originally now. Originally, she was a country singer. Yeah, it was yeah. nothing like what she is now. When did she stop doing country? How many albums in? She just kind of floated into whatever she's doing yeah. now. She kind of Super blended great. into it. It kind of went a little bit half and half and then kind of yeah. went into the pop thing. Do you think she would have done as well in the country field as she's done in the rock yep. field? Oh, yep. yeah. Huh? Yep. Really? <laughs> I think so. she, What? She's a good songwriter. I think any. Well, any I mean, if you consider work. songwriting griping about your boyfriend. Well, there's a lot of griping about your boyfriend in country music. Yep. <laughs> and your old lady and your old man. Yeah. <laughs> beer. Or your truck. Dog, your died. truck. Beer. 
more truck, more beer. Yep. <clears throat> Whiskey. Yeah. Yeah. Now, I bet somebody who won't even get near a Taylor Swift album is Josh. <laughs> I, I, I've seen him dancing to that. He does. He, he, won't, he won't admit it, but I've seen it. He does. He gets on TikTok and he plays it and then he dances to it. No, I like her music. I, I couldn't name one. Well, she does. I, I like her music. I haven't heard any of this one and I don't like all of her mm -hmm. stuff, but, um, uh, but I, I like what she has. She's very good, and um, I thought you know they kind of they kind of kicked her out of country music, really. If you think about it, they didn't really want her when she started to sound a little bit different. You know, I thought yes. I didn't care for the way that she got treated because suddenly she wasn't country enough for them. But you know, at the same time, a man, Toby Keith, was basically writing rap songs, and they thought that was cool. That was going to be the new country. Mm -hmm. Right, and she wasn't good enough for them, so they sort of pushed her to the side. And a couple billion dollars later, apparently, they you know probably they'd like to have her back, and she said, "Fuck you." <laughs> yeah, you know. So I mean, she does. I mean, I'm not like uh, I don't go to concerts and all that kind of stuff. Anyway, I mean, that would be a little too crazy. But you know, they uh, and. I don't like all the overblownness of it all, but that's not her fault. That's people just using her. Oh, yeah. it's her fault. Name, image, and likeness to make money, if you will. Josh, it's her fault. <laughs> you know, she doesn't have to let it become that way, but well, she can not control it. Huh? I she mean, can't I just, control I don't that. Know there's much she can do about. Oh, no. she can control. It. I think she can control it. I, you know, oh. uh, huh? Well, how? I mean, it's a bunch of little girls going wild. That's you can't control that. All she has to I mean, do is these sing kids go says, to the I parking lots and hang out in the parking lots. Yeah. If they can't get in the concert, they'll hang out in the parking lot across the street and try and listen to it through the walls. <laughs> she can't stop that. Well, I don't know. I mean, well, wacky. believe me, if you want to stop fame, you can do it. Oh, you can well, do it yeah, almost you instantaneously, <laughs> you know? But you can't stop friendship bracelets. No. <laughs> you know, well, how many fans? I, mean, were I, all I, that I don't know. I mean, I, stuff? how many I don't, fans uh, were there of, of Yeezy? You know, uh, and now they won't even give them the time of day. What's that? They won't even give them the time of day. Who's that? Yeezy. I'm calling him by the name he wants to be called. Oh. Yeah, she was out here in Carmel supposedly last week. Who? With Kelsey. Oh, oh, tr Taylor? Taylor and Kelsey and Bradley, what's his name? Cooper and his girlfriend. Oh, they were out here eating at Carmel like last week. They spotted her at a bicicleta, a little French restaurant over here. Well, how do you even, you know, if you're that well known, how do you even go out to eat? Close the restaurant, fly in yeah, in a jet, yeah. drive in, eat. Get the hell out! But you know, it's a very <laughs> expensive much. life you have to lead to have. Yeah, some but kind in of Carmel anonymity. they leave you alone. In huh? Carmel yeah. they'd let you walk the streets and they'll pretty much leave you alone. Yeah, a bunch of old people. Yeah, a bunch of old people. Yep. At Carmel, Carmel by the sea, and Carmel. Yeah. They don't care. Yeah. A bunch of old rich people. Yeah, I mean, I, I just like I said, I do like her for you know music or whatever, but it, I think. And I don't really know that this is her fault. Although I would understand what you're saying, that some of it could be controlled by her if she wanted to be. I do think it's oversaturated. I mean, you know, during that tour, I mean, I, I, my, my stupid Amazon device has got a notification for me that I didn't ask for, and it's telling me about one of her things. And then I turn on my Roku, and the home screen is telling me I can watch the concerts. And then, you know, and then to try to get away from it, I watch some football, and then they ruin that. You know, I mean, <laughs> you know, I mean, it did seem to never end, you know. It's like, yep. at some point, I mean, you know, I'm trying to do other stuff. I mean, come on, I don't need to know all about it. I mean, Sirius Radio right now has got a whole channel dedicated to her. You know, she's got their own channel on there for a while, 60 days or something like that, you know. Uh, you know, and then the thing is, is every single channel that you listen to on Sirius 
tells you about that channel. You yeah. listen to the NFL Network, yeah. and when they come back from a break and they do one of their live reads, it's a 10-second live read to tell you that Channel 13 is live and up and running, Taylor's, ver- you know, whatever. Yeah. You know, like I said, it, I mean, you know, you're trying to listen to The Bridge on Sirius XM, which is commercial-free music from, like, the 70s, and they're telling me about Taylor Swift's music. It's like... I, I came here to listen to Gordon Lightfoot, not really. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I mean, but whatever, you know, it just, it, but it is oversaturated. I mean, they dip that donut in the milk just a little bit too fucking long, maybe. So. Yeah. But, well, you know, I mean, I just, uh, I, I don't, den- don't uh, resent people being popular. You know, when I was a kid, I, there were groups that were popular and overly popular. I mean, the Beatles are a perfect example of that, yeah. you know. Uh, 1964, everybody was going crazy over the Beatles. Well, yeah. now, I don't, okay, I cannot attest to Taylor Swift's mu- music. I can't uh, uh, say how I feel about her music because, quite frankly, I wouldn't know a Taylor Swift song if I heard it. You know, yeah. Um, but if I go back and I look at the Beatles, that was some pretty good music. You know, that was that was inventive stuff. I don't think she's doing anything particularly inventive, is she? Well, you're entitled to that opinion. I think she is. Really? I mean, inventive. You know, with the Beatles, you never you never knew what hit their next album was going to be like. Uh, I you know, know, and with Taylor Swift, it sounds to me like you know exactly what it's going to be like. It's pretty subjective, though. I mean, what you call inventive? Yeah, I mean, I don't want to. I don't want to be an old fart. On the other hand, well, breaking news. What do they think is breaking news? The United Automobile Workers reached an eleventh-hour deal with the uh, Daimler truck in North Carolina, securing a twenty-five percent increases. Okay. This is the year of the unions, you know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Pretty much. All of a sudden, that's so. Uh... Yeah. I enjoy the unions. I like unions. I think they're a very good idea. You know? Um, but anyway, so let me see here. What else was happening? Oh, you got the... Oh, yeah. Oh, Harvey Weinstein. Oh, yeah. Um, didn't see that one coming, you know. But, Overturned on appeal. Well, it does. It does make sense. Okay, I don't think it's a. I don't think it's a wrong decision by an appeals court, because what they were saying essentially was the people they were putting up on the stand were not people who were germane to the cases involved. They were simply people who went, yeah, he. This is how he treated me. They were witnesses to his character. Okay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And they felt that that was not germane to the trial. They were not dealing with the uh, the subject at hand, and that it was prejudicing the jury. Did, would you uh, have I have I pretty well? Uh, I didn't read anything it? about why it got overturned. No, uh, either. I just saw a headline. You know, right? But I mean, I think it's clear that you know they probably had some of the same things they were facing that. You know, it was kind of like with the Trump deal. Proving someone is a piece of dirt is not the same as proving that they committed a crime. Right. Yeah. Right. You know, I mean, I mean, Trump piece of dirt, right? But did he commit a crime? Well, that's separate. You gotta mm-hmm. you know, put that on its own uh, presentation for judgment. You know, and I think the Weinstein thing, you know, and I'm not really into all that stuff, but just from observation, was probably pretty similar. I mean, you put twelve people in a box and. They think you know this guy's. Piece yeah, but of shit, you know, you know? It, it, the the the, the uh, prosecution lose the case by just being too overzealous about it. You know, they could have gotten a conviction without putting all those women up on the stand. <laughs> yeah, I didn't follow that, that, no, that the trial at all, so I'm not really sure. But you know, I don't know what grounds the appeal you know the conviction was overturned on and sent back you know basically for retrial if the if the prosecution wants to i believe um but for them to do it they must have i mean you know to me they must have had a pretty 
a, a good reasoning in, in their mind, you know, the panel of judges, or I don't know if it was one or if there's a panel in New York or whatever, that did it because I think criminal appeals are only won somewhere around like 1% of the time or something. Yeah. I mean, it's, 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 it's extremely low, you know, so, so for him to get it, it must be something that, you know, they, they saw as basically egregious, you know, out of bounds or, you know, something that he didn't get that they felt that he should have, or, you know, thought that he should have or something along those lines or the judge, you know, allowed too much, you know, prejudicial things to come in that shouldn't have that, that, and that's what you were saying was, you know, too much information that was just presidential or prejudicial, but not necessarily well, criminal. It, it had nothing to do with the case at hand. Right. In other words, yeah. these were women who had been assaulted by him, but this, they were not what the case was based on. Yeah. And they, it, it was just felt that the jury would be swayed by this kind mm -hmm. of testimony. Yeah, because I don't, I don't think any, and I don't like saying follow this case, but I don't think there was really much physical evidence introduced in this trial, right? I mean, you know, DNA or no. audio tapes no. or videotapes or you know, photographs. Uh, I mean, it was, it was all basically, basically he said, she said. That's what I, you know, was thinking was basically just they found a lot of different people to say he raped me or sexually assaulted me or whatever. Yeah, but the, the, it, no. What they're saying is that th there were people who testified who were not the center of the case. Mm -hmm. You know, in other words, they had nothing to do with the particular case at hand. Let's say, I don't know I, I'm a, a, how many people with the Weinstein they had that they were you know, charged in the major indictment. Um, but those people got up, of course, and testified, and that's cool. Yeah. But then they brought in people who had been either raped by him or accosted by him or he showed his penis to them or something. Right. And they were not the subjects of the case, but yet they were being used to testify. And it becomes then a testifying as a character witness or an anti-character witness. Yeah. And, and I don't know, you know, again, I didn't watch two seconds of that trial or even, re, you know, if it was on or whatever but I think that they also had a lot of cases if I remember right where it was kind of borderline whether or not it was egregious sexual harassment or rape if you will uh, you know I, I don't remember but I mean it seemed like a lot of it was you know if you want to be in this movie you will do this sexual act which is, you know, egregious sexual harassment, but is different than, you know, physical, you know, sexual assault, you know. And I know, look, in our, the way things are going in our world legally, there are some people who believe that, you know, co strongly coerced sexual cooperation is the same now as physical rape, you know. I mean, it is trending that way. So that's what I'm saying. It's kind of like a new... You know, territory. I mean, well, I think his situation. You know, I mean, if it's sleaze bag, yes, criminal. I think you know he probably you know is, but could they prove that in you know a criminal trial? Well, is, the question was, I think, how uh, um, how much he was actually attacking these women, yeah. which was not I really, that. I don't think, what he was doing. What he was doing was using his power. That's what I'm saying, right? Which and, is, and, you know, and then showing up, uh, coming out of the bathroom naked, and yeah. hoping they wouldn't leave because they want a job from you, right? Okay. You know, and that's, yeah. I mean, that's so borderline. I mean, maybe you know, look. I'm sure there's some people listening who are like, "Oh, it's not borderline." You know, I, I probably, you know, I certainly understand that. But it's it's almost like I guess what I'm saying is it's almost some of that sort of is just so close to really not being a criminal matter, but a civil matter, you know. I I guess in a way, you know, like he basically was blackmailing me and sexually harassing me into, you know, and those things are you know in some cases illegal as well. So you know I don't know, but it was just like strongly coerced, you know, stuff. And I mean, I certainly don't blame any victims or whatever. I mean, I understand what 
you know, your livelihood and your career and all that. I mean, mm-hmm. you know, I mean, we definitely heard plenty of stuff after the fact that, you know, a lot of them were warned, you know, don't ever put yourself in this position oh, listen, uh, or whatever. And people didn't really heed that advice, I guess. But again, that's not, that's, so that's still not your fault. I hey, lived, don't go to that neighborhood or you might get mugged and you, I mean, come on, you know. I lived in San Francisco and I knew what Harvey Weinstein was doing. It was all over the business. Everybody knew it. Yeah. And and women were warned, do not go up to his room. Do <laughs> not do that. And they went and did it anyway. So how much responsibility is put upon them? Yeah, I mean, it, that's not a popular take for And, us and some people have, say, right? oh, they but, shouldn't have to have anything put upon them. That shouldn't, nobody should do that to them. Granted. But if you know this is his modus operandi, he was absolutely known for it, and you don't do anything, and you then still go up there, well, surprise, surprise. You know? Yeah, it's tough. I mean, I I get it. You know, I mean, it's... That doesn't make him any less of a sleaze bag. Right. You know? And that what he did wasn't absolutely egregious. Yeah, I mean, it's... It's just so, you know, people get upset by it and everything, and I get it, but it's it's just almost like so many, I mean, how many actresses have we heard now that said, oh, I yeah, I did those nude scenes, you know, when I started acting because, you know, they just kept telling me, if, if you don't, you, you won't have a career. We don't, we won't cast you in this movie, you know, and they uh, did it, and now they have a career, and they made a lot of, I mean, it was kind of up to them. I mean, I, I get that it kind of wasn't, but it also... Well, look, to begin with, was. this casting couch thing, we all knew about that. We all... It was... Lit. You always heard about it. Hollywood's casting couch. Yeah. And it was going on for years. What? Years and years and years. And, uh, I mean, for instance, we have the story, and it I can pretty well state that it's supposedly very true. Kirk Douglas raped Natalie Wood and she because she went up to see him to try and get a part in one of his films and uh, she was 15 at the time uh, go ahead sue me I'm, I'm not going to live that long anyway you won't see the end of the case yeah uh, I mean, but, Hollywood huh? Sounds, Hollywood sounds like a messed up industry you know I mean I don't know how you... And Hollywood protects its own, you know? I mean, I don't know how you navigate it, really. I mean, you know, in today's world, it seems like people, instead of not wanting to deal with it, like, take it and make it their own or whatever, because now with the Internet, you, I mean, you, you have so many women out there now who literally just make more money than all of us combined by just, you know... Taking their clothes off all the time because men will pay them for it, you know? I mean, you got, you know, all these women that said stuff about how the producers told them all that and stuff years ago. And nowadays you get an actress like, you know, Sydney Sweeney who says, hey, I'm not apologizing for having these. They're going to make me millions of dollars, you know? So, I mean, I guess. Now, who is this Sydney Sweeney? I'm not familiar with her. I've seen her name bandied about. She was on Saturday Night Live one weekend. Is she the new flavor of the month? Uh, I don't really know. I mean, she's, you know, very she's pretty woman. She's I mean, you know, she's she's in shows that I don't really watch. I mean, she's, I believe, a sort of a main character in that Euphoria uh, show that HBO or somebody has, and uh, she has like a bit part sort of in The Handmaid's Tale. Which yeah, she's in that. They make her look so different that I didn't even realize it was her until the other day. Um, and then she was in another movie or two here and there. She played a biopic on that woman named Reality Winner that gave away all that intelligence information. It got sent to prison. Um, they made her look terrible in that movie. But, I, I mean, you know, she just, you know, and now she seems to be making a movie every eight or nine months so she's soaking up all the money that she can make while she's while the fire's hot you know so and good for her 
and she does have a fantastic body. So I mean, it's I mean, really, so, I got to check her out. You know, but I mean, like she just. You know, I only mentioned it because a few days ago there was some, I guess, I don't know if it's a female producer or movie critic or somebody basically saying, she, you know, she's only as famous as she is because she can't act. She's really not even that pretty. But, you know, she makes money because she has uh, great tits. And, you know, so Sydney Sweeney puts his sweatshirt on the other day. This is not apologizing for having great tits and says, here you go, Instagram and I'm rich and you're not. <laughs> so, you know. Well, she shouldn't apologize for having great tits. I mean, no. if they, I mean, but you know, but I guess the when we, you started talking about that, it was just like you know, I don't know, two decades ago or whatever, or three decades ago. It's like, oh, you're hi, you're an actress. Your name is Demi Moore. If you want to be famous, you're going to need to get naked. Okay, you know, you know, and nowadays it's just like, oh, that's fine, you know. You didn't blackmail me into that. I don't I think a lot it. of actresses actresses yeah. are bothered by the fact they have to take their clothes off in a film. You know. Right. And I don't know. There are a lot of people that felt like they had no choice. But there are also some people who toughed it out. I mean, and, you know, made it a, you know. I mean, Jennifer Garner is, uh, was a, is a huge star for all these years. And I don't think she ever had to. You know what I'm saying? I mean. There's a way if you're determined, you know, so. Well, you can have your principles and still be successful is what you're saying. Yeah. Uh, seems that way because, I mean, there are other actresses like her that, you know, made it. I mean, like I said, Jennifer Garner, she still makes movies. I mean, she made a lot of money in her lifetime, you know, looking very good, but never, you know, in that way. So, I mean, you uh, know, so. Uh, uh, Jeff, are you aware of Sydney people. Sweeney? No, not at all. See, the older guys don't know of her. I don't know who she is, but I'm googling her right now. Yeah, about, I don't. I don't, I don't like I said. I I just saw this stuff in the news, but I, I don't. Well, I don't know that I've ever watched a movie that. Ever, no, I've I never seen a movie she's been in either. But that uh, that movie that uh, she made of that uh, lady that leaked the uh, the classified stuff, I saw maybe ten minutes of one time because I turned my television on and it was on, you know. But I don't know. I've never. I mean, she doesn't make any kind of movies that I watch, you know. So yeah, yeah. but uh, people seem to. But she is oh, a new flavor of the month. There's no question yeah, about it. Right. I yeah. mean. You know, she, uh, <clears throat> I mean, just one of those people that comes along and now they're going to make, you know, be up there for a while and we'll see how long it lasts. I mean, maybe she'll still be making a lot of movies in 20 years. Okay, and now, Alan well, has been looking up Sydney Sweeney online. Yeah, I think I misspelled it, so. <laughs> she, she looks like a Michelle Pfeiffer slash Twiggy type blonde. You know? yeah, okay, well, good. That's Why? Good That'll help. <laughs> N E Y. Yeah. S Y D N E Y S W E N E Y. Yeah. Well, well it sounds know? like you got it looked up, Brian, so it'll save me the trouble. <laughs> yeah, Michelle Pfeiffer. Michelle Pfeiffer looked much better when she was younger. Sydney, S Y D N E Y. Right? S W. Sweeney. Sweeney came right up here. My child. Wait, I just put S. I put S Let me show the audience. Uh, I put you, S Y D. You guys, you guys won't right see this, but the audience will. Oh my uh, God! You want to feel old? She was born 1997. Jeez. God. Bless her. Yeah, okay. she's only like. Here, here is, uh, folks. In case you're interested, uh, there's Sydney Sweeney. She actually has a cute little face. What does that make her? 27. No, she does. She's. But like Michelle yeah, Pfeiffer 20, was like that too. 27 years old, I guess. 27 years old. 26. 26. She'll be 27 this year. Yeah. Wow. Good. Wow. Well, there she is. Yeah. There's some more pictures. Maybe she'll be on the intersection next week or on, on the Ramble or something. <laughs> yeah. Well. They call in, you know? Well, I can, we can call her agent and see. Okay. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, I think she's cute. I don't think she, she is. I think she's. Uh, I think she's quite cute, you know. But the Your question is, okay. The, the question is, night. all right. For all her fame right now, what about ten years from now? 
Now she yeah. will, she, Michelle Pfeiffer still looks gorgeous now. Yeah, she and, has and, she has that natural look. Yeah, of, but Michelle of, Pfeiffer uh, put herself in a lot of good pictures. This woman hasn't really done that. I'm talking about she's the, he, she's the flavor of the month now. What about ten years from now? Does she have the talent to keep her going? We'll see. Mm -hmm. Black don't. A lot of them don't. What, we'll and have for to Melania see. Trump. Okay. Mm -hmm. Bree is a calling. He should be in here any minute now. I wonder where he's eating. Uh, yes, <laughs> Jeff. Jeff? Yeah. I, I got to tell you that. I know a lot of women who uh, have nice breasts, but they're having problems with it. What? They're you having have problems with the breasts? As they get older, they have all kinds uh, of problems. Oh. Oh, I don't know. My 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 breast hang down. I will nice. say this about Marjorie, okay? And I don't know if I'm speaking out of school on this. Oh one. no! No, don't, don't, don't you, do it, Alex. Don't don't don't. Do don't, don't. No, no, you got no. in trouble I'm Monday for talking. I'm going to say the nicest things about her breasts. They are <laughs> no, really quite incredible does. because even at her age, there is barely any sag. But she doesn't want you talking about her. No, she doesn't yeah, care. I I, that yeah. she wouldn't mind. You know, yeah, but you were going to talk about something last time, and it wasn't supposed to be bad. No, and then, no, it she, well, she left the show. This would, yeah. I don't think she would mind me saying that about her. But if I mean, during this show, we see Alex get hit with a fry pan, <laughs> and she got upset. Technical <laughs> difficulties. Well, I'll have to ask, I'll have to ask Marjorie. You know, yeah, ask Marjorie if you can talk about her breasts on Monday. I'm okay. just saying like that she has, at her age, she's 80 years old. She has the breasts of a of a of a 30 year old. I mean, it's amazing. Fantastic. It's amazing. Yeah. Is it lucky her or lucky you? <laughs> um, both of us. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know. Hello, Bree. Hey, hey John, John Renshaw says that uh, Tony Pig died. Tony Pig. I I used to work with Tony Pig. Yeah, that's what that's what Renshaw says. Oh yeah. wow. Who said that? Is this somebody on our uh... John Renshaw yeah. on the chat? Yeah, John Renshaw. on the chat. Uh, Renshaw. Let me see. Oh, Sydney Sweeney was in White Lotus. John was saying that. Yeah, I think she was on that show too. Yeah, she was in yeah. yeah. season two, right? Let me see. Oh, she here. was. You remember um, that by uh, heart, don't you, She was Brian? in White Lotus, briefly in Handmaid's Tale. Yeah. And, um, yeah, Tony Pig. Gee. Wow. Hey, so I went and saw uh, Civil War today. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh. How was it? It was pretty good, actually. I liked it. Yeah, I'm done. It was interesting. It really is a, I think it's kind of a mind bender, but. Wow. It's, is, it uh, the, is it the four-part series? No, no, it's, no, a it's, a, it's a movie. Oh, sorry. It's a, movie, it's a modern day. It's about four, four people in the press that make their way. You know, we're in a civil war, and the Western Front is four states have uh. started a succession, and they're heading for the uh, four press people of the press head for Washington, D.C. to interview the president before somebody kills him. Wow. And uh, it's a quest from one place to another, and it's pretty interesting. Did you actually go to a movie theater to see this? I did I go to a movie theater, yeah. Me and one other person were there. <laughs> yeah, it's great. Can't, I can't go to movie theaters anymore. Yeah, but I get the senior. It cost me $7 to watch the damn movie. Really? And I was by myself practically. I mean, Marjorie and I should try going to some of the early bird movies, you know. Yeah, it was at 2 o'clock. I was out door dashing. I said, screw it. I'm going to go watch this movie because I wanted to I'll see it. I'll tell you, it. I don't miss movie theaters that much. I, I don't miss I do. I kind of, when I got there, I went, oh, it's kind of cool, you know. They got the sound. They got the big screen. Yeah. I, I like the and, sound. And, That's and, what I like. And they got the sticky floors and the... Nah, you know, this, the, one, the, the the this one's not that bad. It's a big... It's a, not a big place. <laughs> I mean, they haven't been a taking... A small little independent-owned place. Oh, really? Because they haven't been taking too good, too, too, too good care of these theaters. I mean, we have an AMC here that you would think that when COVID hit, they would have taken that time to redo the interior of the theaters and improve the seats. And we went to it right after it opened up again. 
Man, it was sleazy. They pretty much cleaned this one up. They actually put, you know, electronic seating and everything else in it. And, what do you mean electronic? You know, it never was that bad a shape. It's a smaller theater. Seating? Well, I mean, you can go in and pick your seat and sit where, you oh, know, oh, you're supposed okay. to sit and that kind of thing. Oh, well, and, well, the theater, they updated stuff. You know, the, the theater that we went to, the AMC, which I called the uh, comfy chair theater. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you could, you could, you you had to ask for a seat, particular yeah. seat. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. I went to one down in uh, Salinas that was like that, and you know they had everything from, you know, booze. You could buy booze, and you could buy pizzas, and you know, dinner and pasta and everything else. And, you oh know, yeah, the I bet chairs that. reclined I've told and everything before, else. But I love me my 3D movies. You know, I love 3D. Yeah. All right. Oh. So I went down to see. I don't know. It was one of the. Harry Potter spinoffs, oh. I think. Because mm. it was in 3D. So we sit there, and when the movie comes on, I'm going, there's something really wrong here. Oh, yeah, I remember you saying that. Yeah. They weren't running it in 3D. Yeah. Somebody forgot to put the right hard drive in the uh, in the machine, <laughs> right? Yeah. And, uh, it's, it's, and everybody's sitting there with their glasses on. Like yeah. nothing is wrong. But Going me, ooh and ah, yeah, they have no clue. I know when something's wrong, and I go to the theater manager. And I go, "Do you know that you're <laughs> showing that movie and it's not in 3D?" And he said, "Well, wait a minute, let me go up and." So we go up and I show him. Maybe we open up the door and I say, "Look, it's just a solid picture. It's not a doubled over picture. This isn't in 3D." He says, "Well, we don't have enough time to stop it." Because once the movie starts rolling, they can't roll it back. Yeah. Okay? <laughs> so I asked for my money back. And everybody else in the theater is sitting there with their glasses on going, ooh, 3D. <laughs> Some people I don't have a clue. Well, but, but if you don't whatever. care, if you don't, you know, to me, if you're a theater owner, part of the job is showmanship. Yeah, they should have stopped it and said, sorry, it's in the wrong dimension. Come back later. Yeah. Either that or if you can wait, we're going to, you know, it, it, to Restart begin with, it, it isn't whatever. film, it's on a hard drive. You can just... Yeah, but they, 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 they're they on a schedule, I think, and if they reschedule it, then it's going to screw up the rest of the night. Yeah, know, this was about 20 minutes in. Yeah. You know, and... Well, let's cut the ads They can't come in and floor. clean up the sticky floors <laughs> in between <laughs> movies, so that's going to screw everything up overnight. Well, I walked them over to the theater, the next, to that theater where they were showing the same film, but it was like an hour later. Yeah. And I said, mm -hmm. look at this. This is 3D. Yeah. Over here, this isn't 3D. He said, well, you know, we have some showings here that aren't in 3D. And I said, is this one of them? And he looked at his schedule and went, no. Hmm. You know, hmm. so when you do that kind of thing, when you don't put it, it includes showmanship into the showing of films in your theater, it's a pretty terrible thing. Yes, Alan. They didn't offer you a piece of pizza. God, that sounds horrible, Kevin. Uh, they pizza offered me. Theater. They offered me a, a, a ticket to a future showing. Oh, okay, good. They owed okay. you more than that, Alan. What? They owed you more than that. Well, you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah they, they owe me. They the owe me the cab fare. They owe me the popcorn. Yeah, you know that's, all of that. That's right. Yeah, well, they really should have given me more. Well, I kind of. Anyway. You know, I'll, I'll tell you what I kind of like. That what I miss about going to movie theaters is sitting down there and getting yourself a big bucket of corn, okay, and sitting there munching on it. And finding that you've eaten the whole bucket of corn before the movie even started. I know. I set mine off to the side before I waited for all the crap to go. Then then I brought it over and I went, okay, here we go. Okay, you're very good. You're yeah. very good. I wonder how that floor got so sticky, Alex. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, the movie was pretty good. The ending is is pretty interesting. I've heard. Uh, I, I'm, it I'm, seems like it goes kind of slow in the beginning, but then it picks up and it picks. It, it, which movie are like we talking about? This gyro thing, Civil War. Mm. Yeah, and about then it the gyros US up, and then as you get towards the end, it really picks up fast. And then the ending, I won't tell you what it is because it's, it has a little bit of a message if you really watch it, and you go, okay, I see, yeah. and it makes you think. Yeah. yeah. Can't we all just get along? 
<laughs> oh, it's got a lot of that, yeah. Probably got a Donald Trump ad. Now, now Bree, are you in a restaurant? I am. So yes. let's play our game. What do you think Bree is eating? Although he <laughs> shit on a stick. Meat, vegetables, and rice. Pizza shit on a shingle. From a theater. <laughs> are you going to show us? Yeah. Well, I'm Meat. waiting for the food. Meat, vegetables, oh. and rice. Hmm. Here, I'm going to have to get there in the next 10 minutes, Bree. What's coming now? Well, here it comes. What is that? Oh, that looks good. Now, what what are you getting? Show us with your camera. Here. There we go. There. Oh, what is that kind of red thing, that triangular thing? Let me see. I can reverse the camera. Here we go. I just got a neat tablet. Do I see sushi there? Yeah, sushi oh, yes. and watermelon. Definitely sushi. Oh, well, it's watermelon. Okay. Oh, the watermelon looks good. Okay, now let's try something else here, another game. How much did that cost him? <laughs> Five dollars. Five. Well, the, the watermelon is expensive, know. but the sushi could be. I'm saying seven dollars and fifty cents. Five dollars? Wow. I shouldn't say seven dollars and fifty cents in case somebody's listening and they decide to change how much it costs. <laughs> that happened to me yesterday when I was getting a screen for this new tablet. One girl said twenty rated, and the other said eight rated. And I said, I'll go with the eight rated. <laughs> and uh and she looked at her and she said, you know, one they were talking in their language. Well, we should be charging him more. And then I said, but I'm a regular customer. All three of them are, yes, that's right, he is. <clears throat> now, you know what? I I, uh, I never was very good at chopsticks. I've been always terrible with chopsticks. But when I went to China, I got used to using chopsticks, be, but they're bigger. You know what I'm talking about, the Chinese chopsticks? How do you, how do you pay place? with ringworms? <laughs> No, Alex, I got to tell you something about your big chopsticks. Yeah. I didn't get it. I'm trying to ruin his lunch, dinner, whatever the fuck it is. <laughs> well, you go like outside it. and you find some ringworms in the dog. Put, never mind. Alex. Yeah. You're, the, the smaller ones like this are for individual eating. But in China, oftentimes you'll get the big ones. Those are for serving. You were probably eating with the serving the chopsticks. No, no, no. Oh, we yeah. were we were eating with chopsticks. We went to uh, we went to this one place that was just incredible. Had some incredible. Um, uh, it wasn't. Uh, it was just Chinese uh, noodles and uh, it was a noodle store, and it, it was the best. I think the best Chinese food I've ever had in my life. Mm. I'll remember it to the day I die. Which could be any minute now. <laughs> Which, by the way, Alex, I think this alone in New York City would cost you five dollars. You're oh, easily, easily. I was just gonna say. <laughs> what is that? Lemonade. I think Kevin was right. You saw that on Better Call Saul. What is it? Anything. What? Green tea. Tea, green, tea. green tea. Green tea. Green tea. Oh, green tea. Oh, okay. Is my audio really that bad? Yeah, it's really yeah. that bad. Oh. You rather see the green Sony tea XM5. or green tea? Now, I notice a lot of the people in the restaurant are wearing masks. <laughs> that is correct, yeah. Why aren't you? Well, you're eating. I'm eating. But do you put, wear a mask when you're not eating? I have one available. Uh, is, why Why the mask? Is uh, COVID a problem there still? Uh, that's Asian uh, culture. Asian culture yeah. is like that. Yeah. yeah. It's just... The air um, is horrible. No, the air is actually quite worrying. Is it? Um, it it's better than Pittsburgh. Uh, and certainly better than Shanghai and Hong Kong. Um, I guess that they learned during COVID that this was a, a sanitary practice, and so they just kept ripple. 
Well, very but, good. I wish we kept doing it here. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, now, I've been to Vietnam four or five times, and they've. I felt sorry for the boys because you can't even see the girls because they were wearing masks all the time. Yeah, well, Ooh. I mean... Uh, you can see the eye. Yeah. But, and uh, in the Middle East, that's how you do it. Yeah, so I, I you know... This is a, it's it's a pretty good deal all the way around, you know, that people are doing that still. We're not doing it here. And how bad that, uh, Charlie, you've been the keeper of the keys on this one. How bad is it now, COVID? Uh, since since uh, Johns Hopkins quit posting stats, I have no idea how they're doing. Hmm. Yeah, but do you think we should be posting stats? Because I've heard there's an uptick, isn't there? Yeah, it's, 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 this winter was pretty bad. So. Wow. Yeah, we're coming out of it, though. What? Yeah. We're coming out of it, though. Yeah, slowly. We've been fine. We, t- we test our wastewater. We test associates uh, two months ago, and we stopped doing that. Well, if people get COVID now, also, it isn't a death sentence like it was when we didn't have all the medicine and so on. Because we have Paxlovid. Which yeah. has certainly been a game changer, you know. Although Taylor's University. What? Does, does Charlie and Kirk say hello Taylor Swift University? What about Taylor Swift University? I don't know anything about that. Yeah, yeah. We have a Taylor's here. Do you have a Taylor Swift University there? The no. University. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is she do. pop is she popular there too? Oh yeah, yeah. She she played Singapore for six nights, and the big hub of Baloo was Singapore gave her uh, entertainment grant from the Ministry of Tourism, and uh, her agent and uh, they had to agree that that would be the only place she would play in Southeast Asia. So Malaysia, Thailand, they, and Philippines they all got upset because Taylor Swift would not play. Cannot by contractual obligation, she can't play here. She can only play in Singapore. So could you imagine if New York said, we're going to pay her an extra couple million, she's not allowed to play in Philadelphia. It's kind of the equivalent. Wow. Wow. She played in Japan, though, right? Somewhere over there, because um, she did that just before the Super Bowl. Super Bowl, yeah. Yeah. Well, it was just Southeast Asia, where Singapore wanted to have. And if they wanted to, they could have done all of Asia. Singapore can do whatever they wanted. Yeah, well, she's a what? She's a billionaire now, right? Yep, officially. Oh. Yeah. Uh, is, is she the first rock person to be a billionaire? Do the, Be- the Beatles ever become billionaires? I don't think so. Well, I'm sure Paul McCartney's a billionaire. He's got to be, yeah. right? Yeah. He is. Okay. All right. Just I wonder about that, you know. She might not even be the first female. I think Beyonce is a billionaire, isn't she? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. She's got to be up there, you yeah. know. By the way, I saw Beyonce in a movie the other day, Cadillac Records. Mm-hmm. Man, was she good. Good actress. Mm-hmm. It's a shame yeah. that she doesn't do movies anymore. But mm-hmm. what the hell? Mm-hmm. Anyway. I hey, met oh, Beyonce. I got to play the theme here. There it is. You can't hear it. Nice of you all to call tonight. I'm sorry that we didn't have a show last night, but, you know. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to go get a full night's sleep tonight, I think. Uh, But thank you, Jeff. We really appreciate it. Oh, we're going to see you tomorrow, aren't we? That's right. Yeah, you're coming to New York, and we're going to have dinner together. Yeah. Good. That's great. And um, so it'll be good to see both you and Pam. Uh, That's right. We're doing it in our neighborhood. Yep. Yep. Uh, at our favorite restaurant. Also, thank you very much to uh, Kevin for being here this evening and uh, giving us a report on Civil War. Uh, uh, Brian, always a pleasure having you here, as it is a pleasure to have Charlie Wallace in our midst. Josh, see you soon, my friend. And, of yep. course, Alan, thank you for being here. And Bree in uh, Malaysia for joining us tonight. Everybody give a big wave goodbye. Bye, bye, bye. And I'll give you a big wave goodbye <laughs> as well, folks. There they go, folks. That's our citizen panel for tonight. 
There'll be a new citizen panel right after this on the intersection with uh, our good friend Amy Manuel. Be sure to call her as well. We'll see you again on Monday with the uh, pop-up show at 4 o'clock on Facebook. And then we'll be back here on YouTube. Same time, same station in life. In the meantime, as always, if you see her, you know, tell her I love her, okay? Bye-bye, everybody. Have a nice weekend.